So my name's uh, Pete Scully, to talk to all of you who are um, involved. I, I, I sketch here in Davis a lot. I sketch on campus a lot. Um, I've lived in Davis for almost 15 years and I've been drawing pretty much the entire time. And I, and, and I, I, I gave a sketch call last year um, through the sustainability office um, on campus and um, we sketched around the uh, student um, community centre. Uh, focusing on 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 various uh, things that were to do with sustainability. I must admit, I'm I'm not exactly an expert in sustainability, although I ride my bike everywhere. Um, Davis is a great town for that, of course, being the first, uh, well, being the bicycle capital of the US, um, the first city in the US to have bike lanes. Um, so what I'm going to be doing uh, today is I'm I'm going to actually try and draw my bike, um, uh, and that'll be my and and I'm going to do it on the on the iPad. So perhaps like, you know, for the first sort of 10 minutes or so, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen as I'm drawing. So you'll see my iPad directly. Now, I don't know if any of you have used um, an iPad to draw with. Typically, I, I do draw, um, you know, primarily, so 95% of the time, I do draw on paper. I do draw, you know, with, with my, uh, you know, sketch with, I don't know if you, you can't really see because it'll only show a face. But you can see, see the thing behind me. <laughs> Um, but I typically draw, draw with my sketchbooks. Um, but I will be drawing on the iPad, so it'll be easier for you to see as I'm drawing. But then perhaps maybe, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mute myself after 10 minutes. And if anyone does have any questions about drawing, you can just always, uh, you know, speak to me. I'll have my headphones on so I can just unmute and then answer any questions you might have. Um, but yeah, so typically I, when I use the iPad, I use, um, I, I'm using an iPad Air which is uh, the 2019 version, the newest one uh, for that model. Uh, and it pretty much does the same thing as an iPad Pro, but it was about $200 cheaper and significantly lighter. Um, but I use the um, Apple Pencil with that, if you can really see that. Um, and I found that that's actually really handy for drawing. I use the um, Procreate app, which has a really helpful feature where it can it, it videos all of your um, all of your different pen strokes so you can play it back afterwards very helpful in a demo but also really helpful to see how you approach the drawing because sometimes when you're drawing you don't really you don't really think about it uh, too much and um, um, yeah so and the other great thing about drawing with an iPad which is a bonus against drawing on paper is that you can use uh, layers so if you're coloring in you can do all the line work and then you can put the color underneath the layer uh, so I'm going to try and do that when drawing my bike today. Now, um, even though I've lived in Davis for 15 years, um, I, I do find it very difficult to draw bikes. Uh, I, I'm not very good at drawing circles. I, I've never been very good at drawing circles, but um, that's why it's, it's, it's good to challenge yourself. But I'm going to give it a go. Okay, so um, so I'm in, I'm in Procreate, and um, in Procreate you can have different layers. So I'm going to be working on one of these layers, and I'm going to use... A technical pen. I, I like to use a technical pen in Procreate Brush because it's I'm not I'm not very well versed with this app yet so I'm just using it as I would use my sketchbook with the addition that I'm going to color in behind the uh, the main lines so but what I like to do is uh, if I'm using the technical pen maybe if I, I, I can do a very quick sort of outline of what I'm going to draw first and um, because that's my my bike I'm gonna go we're kind of like just just do a quick sort of there's there's a quick line and there's a sort of, um, that'll be a roughly about where the uh, the wheels gonna be and then you've got that there so I'm just sort of marking out the the, the basic shapes to start off with um, and then that's up there not doing the wheels yet because I don't like drawing circles. Um, and that's the that's pretty much where the handles are. Now I've got to do I've got to do the circles, so I'm basically just sort of just figure out that's about about there. Okay, and then we've got uh, that goes down to about. There. Okay, and then I've got this. Uh, I've got my, this additional bike thing on here. So that's my my basic outline. So I'm actually going to start a new layer, and um, 
maybe make the, the pen a little bit thicker. Uh, and then I'm, I'm just going to start uh, drawing what I, what I see in front of me, which uh, this is the, this, that's the part of the handle there. And that line might be a little thick, so I might just sort of make that a little bit less, less thick there. Okay. There's my bike lights. Okay, and then I'll just. Um, I, I I find that when when I draw lines, I tend to make sound effects as I'm doing them. Like I go, you know, and I I only realise I'm doing that now. <laughs> Um, I'm kind of doing a bit of both, so I can switch the thickness um, to sort of make it do that. But even then, if I put less pressure on, it will give us a, a thinner line, which can, yeah, let me see. So like I'm, I'm doing a bit of both. I kind of set it to to, to a, a standard, but then I I'll um, I'll, I'll I'll adjust my um, like how how much I yeah. So so like. Like here, like the, the the maximum will be me sort of pressing down as much as I can. But then I I also like to go over a line a couple of times because I I I I kind of like the way it looks when I draw when um when when it looks a bit sort of scratchier and and like less like a like a vector drawing you know um so sometimes I will make the line a little bit um wobblier you know or maybe sort of go over it a couple of times like that. Um, and I, I quite like that effect. Um, that's not how everyone draws. Some people draw very sort of nice straight lines. And in fact, with Procreate, you can create a completely straight line by just holding your pen down and it will, it will create that straight line like that. And that could be quite handy, um, except that I don't like straight lines like that. <laughs> so, you know. Um, it's, it's it's more of a personal choice there, I think. So, um, so if I'm if I'm drawing the uh, I, I, when when drawing a bike, because because the bike um, you know has, has those wheels that I, I always get a bit nervous about. I always tend to try and go for the straight bits first, and then break down the wheels into smaller sections like this. So, and then I kind of look to see well. The bottom of the wheel kind of lines up in my eyesight with whereabouts that pedal is so i can't go too much further down than that and it is it's not a, a, a circle exactly but it's an ellipse so i want to be a bit careful in fact i might have overshot myself a little bit there um already um but then i guess it, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect um unless this was going on like you know the, the cover of the new york times or or, or something like that but uh but even then I, 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 I do feel that sometimes I, I, imperfections kind of uh, um, make, make, make a more interesting drawing uh, uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll notice the wheel is, 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 is very much uh, not quite well it's not, it's not round <laughs> uh, let's go back to the, the, this side of the bike actually so okay so I'm going to we'll just switch that around there like this and then I'll just, uh, and in fact, you know, sometimes um, if you're really not sure about drawing wheels on bikes, like I'm not, um, sometimes just just doing a bit of the wheel, the brain fills in the rest. That's what I've been told. Um, let's see. Okay, let me go down to about there. And one of the hardest things about drawing bikes as well is 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 perspective. Now I, I really like perspective drawing. And I really like to try and um, get the perspective as close to right as possible. I'm not one of these people that says, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, I kind of think it does matter um, to at least uh, try and understand some of the rules of perspective. Even if you can't get them right for years and years and years, if you practice it, if you really observe and look at it, then, you know, 
after a while, after a bit of practice, you know, it will start coming sort of uh, naturally. Um, so yeah, that's uh, like a, the, the first uh, start. So like, I, I also like to like shade in as I'm going along for certain things. Um, and the, the, these, these are things that, you know, I'm really focused on like the very dark areas, which will make them stand out a bit. Um, now, if I'm going to color this in, ordinarily I could just choose a different color. I'm still not quite decided on how I like using Procreate when it comes to colors. Um, so like, let's say if I, if I use a marker and I sort of like just choose like, you know, that sort of blue, um, for example, well, that's way too big. Make that a bit smaller, I could do that. Um, then I can, oh, take my pen off. If you use a marker again over another bit of marker, it will make it darker, um, which can be a bit annoying, but it's all, it can also be quite, quite useful. Um, now, the problem is I've done it all in the same layer. So like if I decide, oh, that's not working, um, it's probably better to use a different layer. So I'm just gonna undo all of these and I'm gonna start a new layer. And then I'm gonna do the, um, the marker underneath and in fact what that'll do is that'll preserve the um that'll preserve preserve the black lines as well um and i might not be going inside the lines but i also that's another thing i, I don't really mind too much about um because if i didn't want to use the marker i could just go back to a technical pen and just uh, do it that way and as you see like a technical pen can can draw over the marker quite well um and you can't you can do it as many times as you want with a technical pen it's never going to um it's, it's, ne it's ne ne never going to um create a different um uh, shade unlike the marker which uh which will as you'll see so it gets darker in the middle there where they overlap um anyway so Anyway, that's 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 effectively how how I would start to 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 do a sketch. Does anyone have any questions about that at this at this stage? So if I was if I was doing this in a sketchbook, I would I would have a pencil and I would do something similar to this, you know, just to kind of like lay lay things out. Oftentimes I'm doing that, and then I find as I'm doing the drawing. It, it diverges from that right? and it ignores it a little bit um but i'm i'm really using that to kind of block out where i want to be sometimes if i'm doing a pencil sketch first I, I won't even do it as as detailed as this i'll literally just point out where things are supposed to start and end um you know so if i like well, you use a, use a pencil to show what i'm talking about so if i would like to start it there and it'd be sort of rough, roughly around there i want to kind of get to like there so like um that'll be kind of like, you know, sort of where the perspective is. Now, when it comes to perspective, um, I'm, I'm, I'm above the bike, so my eye level will actually be up here. And if, if, if I'm doing things in perspective properly, everything will be pointing towards the eye level, which will be off the page somewhere. So like, so over here, um, well, you can't see where my pen is, so let me help. Um, but um, the, the things that are in perspective should be pointing towards the eye level. Um, if I was sitting down looking up at the bike, obviously I would, uh, let's uh, create a different layer and I'll just show you. If I just, if I just sit down. <sighs> okay, now I'm looking up at the bike. So uh, there, there's, there's the handlebars and I can kind of see that coming down at me there. I've got the, the big wheel there. And, uh, but you know, Here's, here's where my eye level is, about here. And so I've got a kind of, uh, yeah, it's, oh yeah, so the, the wheel would be along the floor there, so. Anyway, that's, that's kind of what I would, I would do first. With an iPad, I can, I can afford to do a lot more sort of scratchy lines for, for, for my, um, my little guide, but, uh, when I use a sketchbook, I, I tend to do that in, in much fewer lines if possible. Um, let's go back to my pen. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, that's, that's basically where, how I would uh, start this off. And then I would, uh, oh dear, 
wrong layer. I'm just going to go back to sort of drawing the details. When using uh, the Procreate app, doing stuff with like markers, that's still a little alien to me. And so sometimes I, fi I find that I'll use Procreate in order to, if I get a bunch of markers, I'll use this first to practice using like that technique before I use the real thing. But I'm so used to using watercolor on paper, I haven't quite figured out using it on the uh, Procreate just yet. Um, so if I, uh, if I ever use watercolor on here, sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll use the, the airbrush and um, using like a soft brush like that. And if I was drawing like the sky, for example, I don't know, choose a kind of a, um, then it's, it, it, the, the, the airbrush app on here is really helpful for like try, trying to draw like a sky. Um, because then you can get like the clouds, you know, so, and you can use different pressure. Um, I haven't really sort of fig figured this this whole whole bit out yet, to be honest. But um, you know, that's that's how I would do it on 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 paper. So, um, anyway, let's go back. It depends where I am. Um, I've started using a water brush, uh, a water pen, um, just in the past couple of years because I finally found one which I like, which is, um, uh, let me see if I can find, it, it's a Faber-Castell water, water brush. Um, and all the other ones I used before that I didn't really like very much. So now I use that because the, 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 the tip stays pretty fine and it's really helpful on the go. But in the past, I've, I, or if I'm at home, I'll always use a brush with a little jar of water because then I've got a range of different brushes that I can use and I can get you know, really sort of, uh, uh, re 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 really fine in there as well. Um, so many times I, I've tried to draw a tall building and started at the bottom and then the top of that church spire, the most interesting part, doesn't fit on the page. Um, some people will actually curve that around, just say, well, never mind reality, I'll just, I'll draw it anywhere and they'll just curve the drawing around. Uh, that's not really how I like to do things, but it does look fun when other people do it. Um, and sometimes I'll start from the top just to make sure I've got the bottom, but if I want the whole thing in there, yeah, you do have to kind of like just measure it out uh, bit by bit and it can feel a little bit obsessive. But I feel that if, if you do even like the most basic bit of measuring at the start and then just say, like, I'm just going to jump into it and see how it how, how it ends up. Um, I, I tend to I, I tend to approach a difficult scene with regards perspective by just sort of starting in the middle somewhere and then drawing the things around it like, in relation to w w where they are. So um, let me just uh, see if I can uh, show you a drawing I did in. Portland, let's see if it's in here. Um, so with this one, I don't know if you can see this here, but um, I, I really wanted to make sure I got the perspective in the background, but I wanted to make sure I got the whole of the um, theater. Now this is a fair, I was, I'd only had the iPad for a couple of weeks when I, when I did this. So, um, so it was the first time I'd really been out standing on a city street. Um, and I wanted to make sure I got the traffic lights in there too. So. Yeah, I kind I kind of had to be, you know, mindful that the 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 things on the bottom were going to be a lot smaller. Um, but then I just figured, well, you know, let's just see where it ends up. And and uh, I just then said, well, I, I want to make sure I draw draw the sign first, and just went outwards from there. And then I said, well, the um, so I create a new layer so I don't draw on the actual thing. So um, so w once I'd drawn this sign here. And I knew that I would have enough room for this bit up here. Um, I could say, well, this this uh, lines up. This this thing here lines up with that sign. So once I've got that drawn, then I can kind of like use this as a space. Well, I I'll draw everything in in this area here, and then um, I just move out from there. So I kind of did it like little bit by bit, rather than uh, did the outline and filled it all in. Um, I don't know. It was, it was a different different way of doing it, but. Um, 
I've seen people that approach this by starting right in the middle and just drawing outwards. And I've seen people that will draw the entire outline and then draw all the bits in, in the middle. And, um, you know, just different, different ways of approaching it. But I, I tend to find that if I, if I go like bit by bit and say, well, I've drawn the Baghdad sign, uh, this bit's over here, that bit's right there, and they kind of line up there, um, then, then, then the perspective kind of comes after that, I would find. I don't know, it's, 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 it's a little, little tricky to explain, but it's, um, it, it, it's kind of like using, using the things around it to, to kind of figure out the perspective rather than looking at the whole picture. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a little easier with an iPad though, because if I run out of page, I can just make the screen bigger. That's cheating really. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I have any um, other very good examples actually, but um, let's have a look. At, I, I know I've got some uh, pictures in, in uh, some of my Lego animations, um, but I'll save that for another time. Um, where's the... Well, like my living room, for example. Now, sketching the the living room is is a, is a good example of, of of being able to figure out bit by bit. I wanted to make sure that I had my sketchbook on the bottom and the screen in the middle. So, kind of just drew the screen, and then I'd say, well, I'm just going to draw the bits around it. So I drew the frames above it and the the cabinet below it, and then just sort of add, like, went outwards with this one and just sort of saw where I ended up, and um, you know. I, and I, and I, I drew my, my leg and my sketchbook in the foreground first so that I could kind of at least have a, 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 a sense of where I was in the drawing. Um, and sometimes it doesn't completely match up, but then when you look at it afterwards, no one's really measuring your living room. No one's really going in there afterwards and saying, well, you know, you've got the, the shelves are way too low. They should be at the top. No one's going and doing that afterwards, um, thankfully. That's why I much prefer uh, drawing um, spaces um, rather than uh, um, people. <laughs> if you get someone's nose out of, out of place, it's very noticeable. So 